you know, you know things are happening when you were at a church, as I was yesterday, the Psalmist, and Bishop Walter Scott Thomas says, family, I'm going to announce in just a few more weeks a new initiative. And I'm sitting there, I'm, a, I'm just a guest at that time. And he says, the Psalmist, we've got to get out front on the stem. And I said, I'll be done. And it just seems no matter where I turn, right or left, everybody's getting involved. And I said, you know, I think I'm right about this. Monday morning, I'm going to have a person who could honestly say, I could have told them this if they wanted to listen to me 15, 20 years ago. And so it takes time sometimes for folks to catch up. But uh, we have with us the publisher, the chairman, the CEO of Career Communications Group, a minority-owned media services company, and it connects to top technology talent to employers that have potential to fulfill their career goals. And that's where Bishop Thomas talked about, I want our young folks to be ready for these new careers. And so if you might call, I don't want to call him the founder, but let's just say the initiator, Brother Tyrone Tabor, and good morning to you, good man. Well, happy new year to you, Senator Young. It's so great to be here. And that initiative that the pastor was talking about, uh, we've been supporting that for over four years. And we've put dollars behind that to help uh, to help them get that program off the ground. Sandy Adams is actually uh, one of the key people behind that program, and the uh, pastor and I are really supportive of that of that effort. Let, let me tell you, you know, I've, I listen to your show, and one of the reasons that we decided that we want to really be part of this as we lead up to the 34th Black Engineer of the Year conference. One of the reasons is because of the opinionated people that we hear who have a passion for the community. And I think the message that we have is that there are a lot of good things that have happened. There's a lot of success stories that our community has. Our challenge is how do we scale it up? How do we offer it to more people? So my heart's lifted when I hear the pastor talk about bringing it to the community bringing it to the kids where they are. Now let's talk about this, the conference and what inspired you to create? Because when, uh, as you, you were behind this, getting the School of Engineering at Morgan State University. And well, guess what? One of the, and it's one of the great things. We went from eight ABET accredited universities at HBCUs to 15. We graduate now over 34% of all the African-Americans in science, and computer science. 15 schools out of over 300 schools that have engineering programs. You help create a legacy. Those are good days, good days, strong days, and thank you for being so, instrumental. So, so let, me answer, let me answer that question. Yes. What made Dr. Deloach and I yes. decide to do it? We brought him in from Howard to be the Dean of Engineering at Morgan, and we looked around, and at that time, they said black kids didn't want to go into engineering. Boy, did we prove them wrong. So this conference was created to excite young people about the careers in science, STEM, math, engineering. Now, according to U.S. Uh, black Engineering Magazine in 1986, only 2% of male scientists and engineers were black, less than 30,000, as you stated, across the country. What was the major factors contributing? to this? They don't know. Our kids, we have this book here called Becoming an Engineer. A lot of our students, our young people, do not know the vast opportunities, not only in engineering, uh, Senator, but also in STEM and support positions and things that I call blue collar STEM. Do you imagine, can you imagine that I can send a student to get certification over at Andorano Community College? That student can get a job as a welder, go to Northrop Grumman, and end up making between eighty and potentially over a hundred thousand dollars. We are not at a lack of opportunities in this nation, nor this world. We're not there. We're at a lack of knowledge leaders and people with critical thinking skills. Every kid could get a job graduating from Baltimore City Schools. But are they being directed the right way? And that's why it's so critical that the 
our church leaders and our religious uh, leaders look and say, how do we bring this information in and reach our young people before it's too late? Well, why were, why were so few black people taking part in science and mathematics? Right? Because we've been, because those are great jobs. And I can take a long time to talk about it, but what is happening is that companies are able to hire more scientists and engineering on a global level and outsource work because they can't find the talent in places like Baltimore or Chicago or New York among people who look like us. Therefore, the investment isn't being made in our communities because the talent doesn't exist. It's just as easy to go to India or East, uh, Eastern Europe or places like that. Now, that can be turned around because we do have the ability to increase that number. Imagine if the federal government dropped another $200 million into Morgan State. Morgan State is one of the top producers of engineers in the entire United States of America. If they had the same resources as a Hopkins, do you not think we can increase that by tenfold? That's what resources is about, Senator Young, and you should know, and you know this. Technology, and I want to give people an understanding of what technology is. Technology Please. is a process in which we take engineering, applied science, math, and we use all of this knowledge in order to create goods, commodities, lifestyles for people. That is all political. We decide who the winners in the technology game will be every single year in the state budget and in the federal budget. And that's what Black Engineer of the Year is all about. Don't tell me we don't have smart people. We've got tons, we have over 10,000 smart people who come together, who mentor, top people in Fortune 500 companies, top people in the federal government, top people in government, all with the shared purpose of increasing the number of underrepresented people in these fields. Now I'm told that over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from some of these fine folks. Oh, you're going to hear from people like Mark Dean, who is the person responsible for the personal computer. Without a Dr. Mark Dean, there would be no Bill Gates. There would be no Michael Dell. What's see, you see, no, that's what I'm telling you. He's a black engineer. We recognized him in Baltimore 20 years ago as one of the top engineers. You know, prior to that personal computer sitting around here, you had to have something called the bus system. If not, you would have a big giant computer, which IBM had. All of those big giant computers, they weren't practical to put on your desk. Mark Dean came up with the three key components to make the desktop computer. Yeah, see, some people would say he caused all the problems too because he brought the technology down to everyday people like us. So you're going to have people like him. You may have somebody like Stephanie Hill, who's the president over at Lockheed Martin, who gives to our community uh, so much. We are not lacking smart people. What we're lacking are the resources to, to build up things we've already created. I've got some things. Time will permit. I want to move as quickly as I can on some of these Great. things with you. Blacks are still underrepresented in science and engineering jobs as a whole. There are more black social workers, human resource personnel, counselors than there are scientists and engineers. I mean, why does our country need more African-American engineers? Well, for several reasons. We have some of the greatest challenges now that we will ever face. I call them the engineering greatest challenges. We have environment. We, need, uh, we have energy uh, challenges. We have cybersecurity challenges. There are simply... Senator Young, not enough white men to go around if you want to be competitive. So companies, smart companies know this. Smart companies, they, they look at the demographics and say, we don't have enough. We have, we have jobs that are going begging right now. So if we don't get women in the game, if we don't get blacks in the game, if we don't get Hispanics in the game, you know who's going to run the game? China. Eastern Europe, these are the people who are going to take us out. India, so American industry, our national security rests behind people who live here moving into the field. 
This is not about being a good guy. This is not about being liberal. This is not about uh, saying, you know, I should do the right thing. Every day I wake up, I should do the right thing. Feed my dog, save my goldfish, that kind of stuff. This is about our survival. And that's why there's a role for every young person sitting out there. And I hope the leaders uh, who are hearing my voice now when come to the Black Engineer of the Year Conference, bring those kids to the K-12 program, which will be on Friday, February the 14th in Washington, D.C. at the Wardman. Real easily, just go to BEYA.org. This is free uh, for the community to come in see all of those companies, see the opportunity, meet mentors, and uh, let's work this up as Black Engineer comes back to Baltimore in 2014, or 2024. Uh, I, I'm sorry it took such a period of time for separation, but welcome back. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> We're you, gonna Senator. pause, we're gonna come right back and have a continual conversation with, uh, I, I was bored on the line, I guess I'm writing, I think you're a genius for concept, thinking, putting this out, and your gift to our community, man. Tyrone Tabor, we'll be right back at 915 here on 1010 WOLB. We're gonna continue having our conversation with Brother Tyrone Tabor. Uh, my goodness, the, the, the resume is so long. All I can simply say is he's a gift to our community. He's a gift in the sense of having something that was in his spirit, and he is living to put in place what he's been called to do. And so we're honored to have him here on the Larry Young Morning Show. Uh, to further our discussion, uh, I want to pick up on the fact that what's the offer again for young people to come to the conference? Uh, it will be our K-12 program. And that is on, uh, that's at the Marriott Wardman in Washington, D.C. Uh, and that's an open program. Kids will learn everything from what is an engineer, what are some of the other uh, pathways if you don't want to go into engineering but still want to be in technology. They will learn how to fill out a basic financial aid package. Do you know a lot of parents, it's tough. You know, I just left the Board of Regents at Morgan State after six years serving with uh, a congressman uh, in Fume and our dear friend Elijah Cummings for six years. They really worked hard on that board. Financial aid's a big deal. Sure. So we offer that to kids. Larry, in 34 years, we've probably brought through a couple of hundred thousand K-12 students from Baltimore City, Montgomery County, and introduced them uh, to these uh, uh, pathways in science and engineering. And it's, from what I gather, this is going to be an important opportunity for them to meet these scientists and engineers, the likes of the person you just, I want to meet them myself, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that you spoke about. And, and not only meet them, but they're going to teach courses. Wow. They're going to sit in that room. They're, you're going to see admirals. You're going to see generals. You're going to see, you're going to see people who want to give back. One of the most fascinating things that we have found about people who go into technology careers, they have invested so much time, it's important to them to give back to our young people and they're willing to do it. So, so again, BEYA.org will give people all the information they need. I was going to ask you, what do these STEM role models do throughout the year? They keep us safe. They make sure you like drinking water, a whole bunch of them are working to make sure that water's clean. You like turning on the lights? They're working to do that. They're bringing the energy. But with that said, they're working full-time jobs, but they still see as a number one priority to give back to their communities. I want to make sure that this is what I use it very often, but I don't use it with any more strength this morning. When I say this, this is a lot of dot in everybody. If you're deeply concerned, if you genuinely care about our community, this is one you need to put down. So you want to make your way. Um, who should they call again? Which websites and social media groups can they get information about becoming the engineer? The easiest way is to go to uh, B-E-Y-A, short for becoming everything you are dot org and you What's will that again <laughs> you like that yeah, don't like you? <laughs> that, 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 go ahead put that out there again 
B-E-Y-A, which means Black Engineer of the Year Awards. Gotcha. But what it really means is becoming everything you are. We're from cradle to grave. You show up, you're going to leave a better person. It's almost like going to church, but it's almost every single day. See, we build, we build a trusted community. And, and, and one of the things I just have to say, you know, because I listen to please. some of the listeners here and, and, and I'm so excited that people are engaged. But let me tell you about some of these Black Engineer of the Year uh, uh, people. They give back. And I don't want to embarrass anybody like a Stephanie Hill over there at Lockheed and talk about how much money she takes out of her personal pocket to help support kids. Or a Linda Gooden, who's on the board of directors of General Motors and lives right here in Maryland, how much money she gave. I'll give you, an, but I will tell you this. She just got off the board of ADP, you know, the check processing people, and they gave us $100,000 in service in her honor for sitting on their board and she just retired off of. So we have, our people do give back, Larry, and they give back a lot of money. I don't think everybody knows what our community is really doing and why I wake up every day so proud to do this job and being able to do this job for now 40 years. For workers with less than a four year degree, there's six million jobs available in STEM. What message do you have for these workers? I gotta tell you, if you're sitting around <laughs> and you're wondering, there's opportunities for you. I talked about the welder job, right? You know, all these ships that are being built, okay. somebody's gotta go out there and do the welding. For every engineer we need, we need about 30 technicians. You can go into a two-year pro. You can go to a two-year college and honestly get a certification, and be able to work. Education is now. Here's my takeaway. Education is now uh, lifelong. All you have to do is get in and continue to learn, because our world is changing every single day. So anything you learn right now is gonna be obsolete anyway. So what we're looking for are people who are critical thinkers, who are smart, who are able to find information. So you don't want somebody in here that you have to tell them what to do because then you can do it yourself. But you want somebody in here that you tell them something they don't know, but they go out and find it and they come back and say, Senator Young, I figured out the answer. That's the future. And that's why our kids are so brilliant, by the way. Our kids, they, they are dealing in situations where they're constantly being tested, having to survive. You can't tell me I can't take a kid out of Baltimore who's been fighting to survive and stick them into some major company and they won't figure out how to survive. You can't tell me that. Now, uh, for workers with less than 40, we said 6 million jobs. But what is this coding, the next bleak, what they call big blue collar job? What's yeah. The coding? What's, what's, that, what's that all about? Well, co you know, I mean, that, that's a t that is, that's important. But I'm less concerned about people who, who can code than I am about people who can think out the game. Now, help me as a, as a layman trying to catch up with your genius here. <laughs> <laughs> you start with coding to what? To, to the person who can actually think what the game is. All right. Okay. So coding is like a computer language. You go in, you learn a language, you figure it out. That's a commodity. After enough people know how to do that, I can send that job to India, which we're already doing. I can send that job to anybody and pay somebody $15 an hour. Now, you come up with one of these computer games, and you can conceptualize it, and you can hide. This is technology. And now you you got a process. You figured out the computer game, Right. You're now able to hire the coders yourself. You're able to hire the art designers. You're able to hire all of these commodity people. Then you walk away with a hundred million dollars. That's why we need technology leaders. And that's what we're trying to teach. So yeah, coding is important. You need to know every job there is, but you don't have to be an expert in those jobs. You need to be able to manage technology. That is the key to where we're going and what, how, how we're going to retain our global dominance. One more. Okay. <laughs> how is the conference supporting two-year 
uh, institutions and students enrolled in associate degree programs and certificate programs? Oh, that's such an easy question, oh. and that's so important. We really have focused a lot on the two-year colleges because we found most of our major employers, and I'll tell you, General Motors, IBM, Lockheed, Northrop, uh, I can just go down the line. For every engineer they need, they're looking for people with two-year degrees as well. So there's tons of opportunity. So we bring in colleges throughout the country that are two-year colleges. Uh, Baltimore Community College is one, for example, but down in New York, Megar Evers, we bring in all of those, those schools. And those kids get jobs and interns. If you, it, hey, mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandma, church leader, if you've got a young person in, in college right now in a STEM career and you want them to have an internship this summer, you need to get them to the 34th Black Engineer of the Year Conference. Over 100 companies will be there with jobs in their pocket ready to give our kids. You know, I get these phone calls later, Senator Young, from people. Can you help my son? Can you help my daughter? I say, hey, you, if you had gotten them to, in February when the companies were hiring, they would be working right now. So again, B-E-Y-A dot org. And that career fair, Friday and Saturday, and it's free and open to the public. I said one more, but I saw <laughs> this. Just turned the book. Uh, Modern Day Women in Technology. Oh, man. That's a whole discussion itself, isn't it? It is a big discussion. You know, uh, I, I don't want to start because, you know, this right. soapbox gets get it. But, you know, women, we have another conference in Detroit called the Women of Color in STEM, the largest conference for women of color in science and technology. And I, I got to tell you, we have not done our women right. You know, we've closed out opportunities uh, for them. But with over 50 percent of them, you, 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 you can't have a society. You can't win this war by discriminating and excluding people. I'm going to ask you to do this because we have a segment that we call, if you missed the Larry Young Morning Show, you miss. Now, we're going to replay this. I don't know when, but we'll schedule a replay with this conversation. I want to replay it because I think the people should, in our audience should hear it again. Uh, we'll play it. But I've got about a minute and a half. And if you missed the Larry Young Morning Show and you missed Tyrone Table on this is what you will miss. Give me a closing strong statement. The future's bright. Our young people are our future. We have the opportunity, as Elijah would say, what we are to be tomorrow is what we will do today. And I do believe very strongly in our community to do the right thing and to continue to put our emphasis on supporting our youth and our future. Thank you for honoring us with your presence, good man. Thank Much you, Much appreciation to you, sir. My pleasure. Ah, family, it's with his uh, closing out right now at 9.30 on 1010 WOLB.